to start off the meeting, uh, Lindbit CEO and DRBD creator Philip will talk about some exciting news for Lindbit software to find storage users. And I won't say anything more because I don't want to dampen the excitement that me using the word excitement has probably caused. But really, I've been following this development uh, internally for some time now and have just written a uh, on the topic for a blog post that will be published very soon. And I'm excited about it and think you will be too when you experience it. So with that mysterious and exciting introduction, Philip, please tell us more. <laughs> wow, thank you for setting the stage, Michael. Um, okay, I, I bring it to the point. So we are going to open source release. Uh, the graphical user interface for Linbit SDS. Um, it goes by the package name Linstore GUI. And yeah, so we did that as of today. So you can find it on GitHub. Um, I just got a notice from one of my colleagues that the PPA on uh, the PPA, that's the personal packet archives for, for Ubuntu. That's also going live uh, as we speak here. And let me give you a small demonstration of it. So sharing my screen. And here it is. So I assume screen share is coming through. And let's start um, by checking the version. So this is the version we released today. Um, it already says that it is open source and I'm connected here to a small three node cluster as we can see here. And when I open here this inventory section, I can see the three nodes of my Linbit, uh, Linstore cluster. Um, so maybe, maybe what I should mention at this stage, um, the purpose of the GUI is to be like a, a replacement for the command line interface. Um, so it will not guide you through the setup process. The, the idea is that you can set up the, the, well, you can set it up yourself. That means you need to install the necessary packages and you need to be able to start the Linster controller. But after you have the Linster controller running um, and you have installed the Linster GUI package, then you can connect with your web browser to the node name where you have your controller running and attach this port number 3370. And then you find this interface. And you can take it from here. So adding satellites is something you could already do with the GUI. So here in my case, I already have my three satellites added, um, but adding a new one is pretty straightforward. So you see, you just give it the same information as you would give it on the command line. Yes, and um, so here I think the node view, well, we can go in there. Oh, that, and then there is this view action. So we, here we have all the details, what the Linster satellite detected on capabilities here. So you see, this is a typical Red Hat system we have LVM and LVM thin available, but we don't have CFS available. And yes, this one contributes 
nearly 10 terabyte to the pool. And it's pretty similar for the other ones. Then maybe let's look into the controller page. So here we have all the controller properties that I, let's say available by default. And, and we could add more and auxiliary properties up here. Yes. So with that, we could set any, let's say cluster-wide defaults we would like to set. Um, and having this as an GUI makes it a lot more easier to, let's say, explore all the options, right? Um, and here we have the storage pools. So that is about the same as LinStore storage pool list. And yeah, free capacity, infinity, that's nice. Um, so I think there's not a lot more to explore on this page. And let's go into the storage configuration, the resource groups. So this cluster is pretty empty at the moment, but we already have two resource groups prepared. So one that has a place count of three and one that has a place count of two. And you see it has the name CloudStack. So this is the beginning of a CloudStack cluster. And what we can do here if we dive into the properties of this resource group, we see that in case a DBD resource loses access to data, it's going to suspend IO. So this is not a default setting, but it is a setting um, uh, uh, um, suggested uh, for, for the use case of virtual machines. Uh, recommended. Recommended was the word I was looking for. The same if a node loses quorum, we want to suspend IO there. And we try connect in case of resource uh, role resync direction conflict. And I think there is one missing. And that's, let me see if I can find that real quick. So that's um, on. Okay. Okay, I don't want to pause here too long. Uh, uh, searching for it. Um, and when we compare that with the HA groups properties, so we see here the difference that is the same. Yeah. Okay, and apart from that, we have the view of resource definitions. Right now, only a single one is there, the Linster database itself, and so on. Here, volume definitions, you will see the same thing, same in resources. And the volumes. Okay. Um, then maybe something, uh, a newer feature of Linstore is that Linstore can have different remotes. So a re remote is a, a S3 endpoint or a different Linstore cluster. And we can also manage these remotes through the GUI and and of 
course, snapshots. This cluster doesn't have a snapshot at the moment. And we can also look at the error reports and retrieve them through the interface. So, and it also comes with a user management, but I'm not enabling this right now um, because this is available on, on a port on your machine and you might want to secure it with users and passwords. Okay, I think that is it for the quick fly over the interface. And as I mentioned before, we published the source code as of today. So it is on GitHub in our organization, the Linsto GUI repository, absolutely fresh. Um, I think that's it to this topic. Back to you, Michael. Great, uh, great to hear. Uh, thank you, Philip. Uh, we did get a couple of questions in while you were presenting. The first one is, can you control LinStore gateway features in this GUI, such as setting NFS shares and iSCSI gateways? Yes, that's also possible. Um, I think it is one of the settings where you can enable it. And you also, you know, Linsto Gateway uh, is a daemon that exposes its own REST API. So you need to do a little um, bit of configuration on the GUI. You need to tell it where the gateway server is running on which IP. And then you can do the basic operations of the gateway also through the GUI. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, a second question um, also about what you can do with, what you might be able to do with the GUI. Is there any ability to view or control DRBD reactor in the GUI? Yes, very good question. Um, at the moment it has no controls for DBD reactor. Uh, and this is for sure something we will look in in, in the future, but not at this point. <laughs>